So today at uh, Dear Learners, a very good evening to all of you. Today we are going to discuss on sustainable livelihood security. So it is basically based on today's presentation is basically based on the study material uh, which we have already provided. Uh, it's just stack it as a simple discussion uh, to clear some of the concept uh, which is written over there. I do not update any contents because if you look into the purpose of that particular unit, you will find out that uh, the purpose of that unit uh, is, is to understand the concept of sustainable livelihood security. There are now many more uh, models which come up recently, but uh, first let us try to have a an understanding of the basic concept of this context. So let us when you talk to sustainability here, I have uh, this uh, sustainable livelihood security index. I put uh, this particular uh, photos in front of you uh, in this title uh, PPT. Uh, the reason behind this is, you know, when you talk about uh, livelihood in India in particular, and in general, most of the developing or underdeveloped country, agriculture is still uh, one of the most secure livelihood we have to tap. But unfortunately, in the process of implementation or in the process of understanding the importance of this particular livelihood, we are not able to uh, give uh, a secure option to them. That is one of the region uh, today uh, in India, as we know that farmers or farming is no more, I mean, uh, a lucrative job in the sense that we were uh, the children next generation of a farmer, even the parents do not, I mean, recommend uh, them uh, to continue their farming practices. But the positive thing what we have seen in the last uh, one decade is that uh, due to, uh, we can say, uh, due to a highly awareness, uh, high awareness on the issues of sustainability and uh, in general and health uh, impact in particular due to industrialization or different farming practices which was introduced in the last few decades. We are coming towards and uh, going back to the natural way of farming is in this, um, um, in the modern time with the eco agriculture. Okay, because of this new uh, this, um, development of new revolution paradigm shift, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, some of uh, uh, these members of some of uh, some members of this generation, they are looking towards agriculture as one of the important uh, livelihoods. So let us have a look into what are the major concerns. When we're talking about the livelihood security of livelihood, the first point come to uh, in our mind in front of us is poverty. <laughs> we want to give uh, our, uh, you know, in sustainable development goals also and SDGs also and the wins to sustainability come up and all the uh, nations across the globe when we are trying to have a global common effort in fighting the environment and pollution, which is later on that was broadening towards that sustainable development concept. Uh, first come in our mind, it is the poverty that brings the pollution in one side. In other side, we are also saying it is because of pollution, poverty, means the interlinkages between poverty, uh, with poverty and environment degradation. So when we talk about uh, livelihood security or livelihood, first come, as I mentioned, that poverty comes 
first. So how we have to define poverty? So poverty is defining, it's a kind of, I mean, it's a uh, number of international organization, different nation has defined poverty. It's we have also discussed when we are talking about sustainable development goals, which a person or family uh, who earned uh, one point, uh, less than $2, $1.9, less than uh, $2 a day, they are defined as a, uh, as, a, um, uh, as a poverty line. You can say that is a poverty line. So if you want to bring the level security in particular, or uh, want to bring the sustainable development across the globe, the first and the foremost, we have to talk and we have to uh, understand or we have to work is to end the poverty and hunger, which is interrelated. That's why MDGs and SDGs as, as, as uh, and the first uh, goals of DOBO or bottom um, uh, this MDGs and SDGs we have uh, a particular objective of uh, ending poverty or ending uh, this hunger, to end the hunger. So poverty is the defining parameter and its eradication results in attaining livelihood security. Means if you want to bring the livelihood security is, you have to, I mean, uh, down the number of poverty, people under poverty. Or we have to, our target is as disease, as disease by 2030, uh, we should try our best level to have a limit, I mean, uh, to have zero poverty across the world. Then, what is livelihood? The word itself, livelihood, that gives you a securing the necessities of life. So, when we define, when we defining the livelihood security, poverty is one of the first issues we, we need to understand. And then, the second comes into how can you define livelihood? It's a means of securing the necessities of life. So when you talk about livelihood, now what we can say livelihood, uh, the issues of livelihood has no political boundary, has no social boundary. Even uh, last week I was watching some of the uh, videos which related to uh, this uh, livelihood and poverty across the globe. No, these issues of poverty still exist in developed country especially in the remote area or rural areas of developed countries like in the US also. So when you talk about uh, their, I mean, um, uh, their way of definition may be different, but if you look into livelihood, they do not have proper shelter, they do not have proper, I mean, the livelihood uh, uh, pattern also. Then what is the term security? You know, it means the state of being free from danger or threat. When you talk about being free from danger or threat means your livelihood should be free from danger or threat. So when you talk about livelihood security, when we talk about livelihood and giving livelihood, that's why using this word, you just, if we understand the meaning of this word security, that's why in HDZ, we have a special goal that's a decent job. Giving job doesn't mean that you are free from danger or threat of from your livelihood. So we have, so when we talk about livelihood security, it is not only the questions of giving the job or uh, increasing your uh, their uh, this earning capacity. It is talking about uh, holistic fabrics of different components, right? That then only you will be able to be free from danger or threats. So livelihood security can just be understood as access to income and resources to meet basic needs. So first, last, that three words, meet basic needs, we have to define in a, from a broader context. So when we talk about livelihood security, we have to understand the different dimensions of sustainability. When we understand the security, then we have to, I mean, free from danger or treat from all of, particularly from that different dimension of sustainability. So we'll see when I was, I mean, traveling across some uh, states, especially in Northern part of India, in UP, 
and Haryana, Uttarakhand, then I have seen that uh, when you go to the different rural, uh, I mean, the settlement rural areas, you'll find out your livelihood is still in diverse way. See, this person, their livelihood is this kind of, I mean, uh, what they are doing to mark the threat from the cotton. That uh, this is a picture from uh, a village near uh, Dehradun, I mean, uh, near Rurki. No, uh, what I'm saying is when you talk about uh, giving the livelihood, what you have to understand the last livelihood security, when you have to understand the word the term security, whether giving such kind of, having such kind of uh, livelihoods, they will be able to seek. Is it free from danger? You have to understand. So conventional approach to poverty eradication, you know, focus only on certain aspect or manifestation of poverty characterized uh, by provision of access to three basics, needs of human food, clothing, and shelter when you talk about food security. Because when you talk about uh, this, uh, particularly uh, that uh, food security or livelihood or ending the poverty, we always talk about that food security. Okay, so when we talk in that conventional way of understanding the, understanding the livelihood, we focus only on uh, food, clothing, and the shelter, right? But in this uh, current world, in this uh, modern world, in this era of, uh, especially in this era of climate change, whether uh, with this conventional way of defining the poverty eradication, or whether it has to be, I mean, still considered uh, or not, that needs to be understood. So if you look into different studies carried out, research studies carried out uh, by different authors, uh, on policies uh, that has a fo sole focus on providing food security, they found that uh, narrow, uh, uh, it is a kind of that uh, conventional approach of eradication, that definition of that uh, uh, basic human needs is very narrow minded. And it is misleading to treat food security as a fundamental need independent of wider liable consideration. Yeah, what we can say that if you are using special food security, then for example, let us take an example that, okay, if a basic human needs, if a person is having basic human needs, whether are we going to say that they are uh, free from uh, poverty? No, not, uh, uh, not exactly, right? Because let us take an example in Delhi, a person, a uh, homeless person, if you are providing them shelter, Food clothing, are we going to say that they, this, that particular person are free from poverty? So these are some of the complex issues we have to understand. That's why we're talking about livelihood security. So we need to address other aspect uh, that was felt, recognized, uh, uh, that uh, uh, recognized, uh, then thus emerges in this way emerges the concept of sustainable livelihood and a sustainable livelihood family. Because we have to, as I may, I told you, most of you know since you are uh, from the discipline who is very emerging and uh, you understand broader context or integrated approach, holistic approach of understanding issues. So we need to understand basic framework of any of the issues in this context, livelihood security, right? So a sustainable livelihood, when you talk about sustainability, we have the meaning, uh, we know the meaning, a sustainable livelihood is commonly accepted as comprising the capabilities, assets. When you talk about assets, we need to understand both assets. As a, that is material and social resources for a means of a living. A livelihood sustainable when it can cope with and recover from stresses. That's why we're talking about when we talk about the, uh, the security, livelihood security, we have to understand that should be free from threats. So from stresses and shocks and, uh, and uh, maintain or enhance its capabilities and access both now and in the future means the temporal dimension, special temporal dimension, while not undermining, undermining nature resource batch. This is one of the best accurate definition of sustainable livelihood, 
which is uh, given by Department of International Development, Dafid UK. So then the next uh, is, what is sustainable livelihood framework? The sustainable livelihood framework is an approach that provides a holistic understanding of the livelihood of the poor. Here also, I have some reservation because when we talk about livelihood, we're talking about only the poor. That is what I came up in my mind when I was reading, uh, uh, re I mean, a quick review in different papers. So, it centers on ages of the poor and how they can increase their ability with stand socks to their livelihood. In one sense, uh, what we can say, uh, what uh, the, uh, this particular sustainable livelihood framework, uh, what it focuses is okay, we understand that we have, uh, we can look livelihood in different level, but when we look, we look into those uh, underprivileged groups, then they have leads capability uh, to withstand uh, socks to their uh, livelihood. So there are five assets are identified. There are the natural assets, physical assets, human, financial, and social capital assets. So the access to and the interaction with such assets determines livelihood those involved. So we have to understand if these five important assets, the natural assets means the resources, the physical means infrastructure, human means the relation, the financial and social capital assets. So this is how sustainable livelihood framework was de uh, developed. So in context of the livelihood security, a defining moment was the adoption of household livelihood security as a framework for relief and development 1994 by care. Because when we talk about the livelihood, at first, as you know, uh, ending poverty and uh, hunger. And uh, that needs, look, we, needs to be looked from bottom up approach. So in that, you have to understand that that has to look from the context of uh, this household, uh, from the household level. So how can we define household level or, or household livelihood security? So household livelihood security is defined as adequate and sustainable access to income. So access to income resources to meet basic needs, including adequate access to food, potable water, health facility, educational opportunities, housing, time for community participation and social integration. You look into this particular definition. When you talk about this particular household level livelihood security, there's some component as we define met uh, the basic needs. Because in the beginning, we have we used to talk about three important basic needs. Now today, these educational opportunities, portable water, health facilities, community participation, social integration, because we the human as a social animal. So that's why Professor Swaminathan defined sustainable livelihood security as livelihood option, which are ecological secure. Because if you look into the, the relation of three, that five important uh, the assets of uh, that on, on that framework, you will understand that ecologically 
that we need to be secure, economically efficient, and socially equitable to underscore the three, part, three aspects of uh, three aspects that is ecology, economics, equity. Equity means social aspect, right? So the concept of sustainable livelihood has both, you can look at in macro and micro level implication. How? In macro level, it prescribed for ensuring the sustainable livelihoods that include stabilizing population. Now, what Professor Swaminathan proposes that we have to look the sustainable livelihood security into basically two major level. One is in macro and one another is in micro level. What we're talking about the micro level is what we're talking about also level, livelihood security level, security. So in macro level, you know, if you want to bring a long-term sustainability, we need to stabilize the population, reducing migration. It's, I don't think so we need another discussion on that. Migration is also one of the factor. Pending of core exploitation, we have to be free from exploitation and supporting long-term at end. It is resources that gives you your livelihood. So we have to support long-term sustainable resource management, right? And in the micro, in the micro and the local level, if you look in the micro and the local level, what do you feel about? The critical increase in uh, adequate stocks in the flow of food and case to meet basic needs. That's why we are talking about giving job doesn't mean that you have livelihood. You are giving livelihood. If you are not getting the timely, the wages timely, then what is, if you do not have, then if you do not uh, get, if you have money and if you do not uh, and access to buy the food, that is also important. And access to resources, that's why income and access to offset stocks. So we need to understand these two major level of livelihood security, livelihood security. So this sustainable livelihood security concerns is, you know, but at a micro and a macro levels, it clearly indicates the immediate relationship between, between uh, sustainable livelihood security and sustainable development in the context of developing countries, especially. Right. Moreover, the macro and the micro prescription for SLS are also consistent with the principle of sustainable living identified by the IUCN UNIF WWF. The point here is that you now when we talk about sustainable livelihood security, especially in these developing countries, we still, we have to understand or we have to uh, look that livelihood security uh, from uh, different dimension and pillars of sustainable development. Then only will be, you will be able to give long-term livelihood security to the different group of people. So to answer that, as you know, we if we have effective policy, we'll be able to manage population growth and migration, mainly through economic development. For example, if we have that proper infrastructure in rural area, remote areas, automatically broader population may be able to control up to some extent. And uh, you have livelihood, livelihood infrastructure in uh, those area, in most of the areas, I mean, if uh, it's, uh, I mean, evenly distributed, if it is evenly distributed across a nation, then I don't think so. We don't think so migration will attack flesh. For example, uh, a majority of the, these uh, value wages uh, uh, 
uh, they travel from their hometown the, uh, city is to earn their livelihood because they do not have that infrastructure or way of uh, get, uh, uh, that livelihood, uh, whatever they are doing in the metro cities. It is one of the important uh, point we have to understand. Then, as you know, social exploitation means social equity needs to be looked into. So when you talk about social equity, it can be limited, I means social exploitation can be limited only through greater equity in income distribution. Because as we repeatedly discuss about, uh, uh, we repeatedly discuss about uh, one of the output of our, uh, this economic development is social inequity, right? Because of the, uh, you, we have uh, different layers of income distribution or income growth. So asset ownership, access to natural and technological resources. So if we have, we are able to give access to all these important assets, then there will be social equity. And the sustainable management resources in this critical, critical and ecological securities, of course, uh, that will be happen. If we have properly managed the uh, natural resources, that will have an ecological security. So it is in view of this rationalities that Professor Swaminathan, because if you look into definitions of number of definition of sustainable development uh, since 1980s, but uh, there are only few can be applied uh, is which are applicable uh, of those uh, views of Professor Swaminathan, he identified that the three basic condition which is crucial for achieving sustainable development in general and sustainable livelihood security in particular, whether it may be at uh, household level, that is micro level, or up to some greater, another higher level, ecosystem level, or regional level, or global level. When you talk about ecosystem level, yeah, you can understand that in village contacts or to, uh, I mean, two or more I mean, village, uh, two or more, I mean, uh, 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 village or means uh, in there yeah, we can uh, say that for example uh, in an administrative boundary then regional level or global level in any of the level we have to understand the ecological security economic efficient and social equity these are the three basic conditions for achieving sustainable development in general and sustainable livelihood security in particular so the conceptual linkages between SLS, sustainable livelihood security, and other modern welfare concepts, including sustainable development on the one hand and the policy linkage between these different concepts and their major determinants on the other hand are difficult. In your study material, you will find out that in figure 3.2, what are that? You will find here, see how livelihood needs a human development. Then it is if we look into that, if you have human development, you have quality of life. If you have quality of life, then sustainable development. So these are, I mean, interrelated. You will see here uh, that population environment, population environment relation, when population is impact on your livelihood and environment is impact. So you will be able to understand uh, this uh, easily from this particular, uh, this figure. So the basic livelihood here, uh, in this diagram, we will see the basic livelihood is an important component of human development. That is, forms an important component of quality of life. In turn, is a critical factor underlying sustainable development. You will see here. Then, at the subsequent stage, the concept becomes broader, including the respect. For instance, sustainable development implies, besides a reasonable quality of life, as we always talk about. Uh, the livelihood security, ecological security, and social equity. So in this sense, the generation of sustainable and secure livelihood is the dominant welfare goal of sustainable development. So the concept of sustainable livelihood security captures in itself not only the requirement basic human needs or basic livelihood, that is basic human, uh, basic need. Uh, it is also, but also those of human development qualitative improvement in standard of living. Means 
basic standard of living. When you talk about here in the standard of living, you should not look into those standard of living, what do we define as a consumptive lifestyle. So the conceptual linkages between sustainable life security, security and other welfare concepts are bolstered further by the commonality of the determinant. They are population, environment, natural resources, science, technology. That's already and explaining that particular uh, 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 that uh, figure. <clears throat> this that particular figure, you will see that that, that have a feedback effect, effects and a causal linkage between the welfare concept and their determinants uh, that are indicated by uh, two sided arrows. So poverty measure outcome of livelihood insecurity is to do with more than the mere absence of income and food as absolute poverty is intimately related with factors like malnutrition, illiteracy, disease, squalid uh, surrounding, high infant mortality, and low life expectancy. So you will find out when you talk about sustainable livelihood, you will find out number of important parameters. So achieving sustainable livelihood security leads to the gradual elimination of poverty. So how the poverty eradication and improving livelihood security is interrelated, you will uh, you are able to understand from this uh, I mean, way of understanding the livelihood security, all right? So in that way, uh, that if you want to eliminate the poverty, then you first is we need to achieve sustainable livelihood security. Then what is sustainable livelihood security in that analytical frameworks in the, uh, the methodology? What are its framework? Three dimensional conception began, uh, given by uh, Professor Swaminathan uh, in three dimension, as you know, ecology, economic, and ethics. Ecology, economics, and ethics, three E's, okay? What are methodology? We'll, uh, in study material, you will find out uh, equation. I will not go into detail on that equation here, sustainable livelihood security index is X of I get the explanation of this equation is here. SLSI, IJ is the index of the component, uh, I component of SLSI. What is the I component? I component, component can be ecological, uh, social, or uh, uh, economic component. And the entity is the household in a village context, project or technology in a policy option. This, this is well-defined in our study material. So this is the well-defined uh, um, that, uh, that in, uh, parameters of this uh, particular, uh, uh, this formula, okay, equation. From this, you notice that enumerator in the one means that the extent by which Z is that I'm not uh, entirety did better in the I component of SLIs as compared to the entirety showing the worst performance in that component and denominator indicator range. That is difference between the maximum minimum. That's what, uh, easily reflected in that particular, uh, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, equation. So equation, we have equation number two, uh, that talks about uh, what is the average of all the component in the ICs. That is uh, equation. I will uh, directly jump into which uh, into uh, that other in see empirical study of India study, giving an example in the agroecological system. Uh, in order to demonstrate the utility of sustainable livelihood security index, that's you know, formula is given there in equation two equation by using that, uh, Swamin, Professor Swaminathan and his team, uh, they have uh, study and empirical uh, that is study in Indian context. So uh, let us look into those study that is related to agriculture and sustainability of the 15 agroclimatic regions of India based on the easily available ecological, economic, social information. That means ecology, economic, and social information. Three important dimension. 
So in ecological dimension of sustainability, what variables they, are, they have taken? Forest cover. Because if you look into the agricultural pattern in India, you will find out relation between forest cover and uh, uh, that soil fertility, and uh, especially in the mountain area, you will find out the, uh, how uh, the fertility of soil is related to your uh, forest cover and other production. For example, when we talk about the production and the role played by different biodiversity component, if you, you have that will come up in ecological economic, like uh, the other values means uh, uh, that ecology, uh, economic, ecological economic values are given by the forest in that will find out uh, the uh, major role played by agrobiodiversity, especially in forested area in production of uh, agricultural production then another is they have taken net zone area to the total geographic area was also selected jointly represent ecological component of SLSI. Here, what it they said that for ecological dimension, they have two major component words. One is forest cover, it is well defined here because the proportion of total geographical area of its region under forest with recognition that Forest cover is not a good and uniform measure of the actual quality of the canopy cover. Also, forest will naturally be more in mountain region, but every very low in the plants. It means that a critical minimum forest cover is essential for ensuring ecological security should vary depending on the geophysical condition of the region. So that directly reflects that, that your production uh, or uh, that, uh, 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 your agriculture, quality of agriculture, is directly in that related to your forest cover. Then another uh, parameters, what they are talking, uh, uh, the variable they are taking is net zone area, right? Uh, so uh, everybody knows that uh, most of us knows that 20% of the plants, 33.3% of plateau in the hills, 66.6% of four mountain regions uh, suggested a critical minimum forest cover to be maintained. Although greater area under forest could imply greater ecological sustainability of region, nevertheless, it is also implies lower area available for the cultivation of food and crop, food and fiber crops and vice versa. That is also a very important point. That doesn't mean that you have 60% coverage of the forest, doesn't mean that you are well secure. So we have to uh, maintain uh, this, some ratio. So this indicates the existence of some conflict between ecological security and agricultural expansion. Okay. The next is economic efficiency. For that, they have taken uh, the variable of blend productivity measures in rupees per hectare. Because we then need to understand that economic efficiency of the particular agricultural product. And the social, uh, so then physical performance was affected by, as you know, when you talk about physical performance, it is affected by the soil productivity and the biochemical technologies, like the use of hybrid varieties and fertilizer. That's also the habitat taken care. Economic performance is affected by the marketing and other rural institution structure of the region. Nevertheless, that's why we are talking about when we have the production, if we do not have proper uh, off farm and on farm market linkages, then your sustainable livelihood security is worthless. That's why we are having a lot of issues to sell in the rain season. What happened that uh, in the region of Bidava, especially in Maharashtra, people, uh, the farmers are suicide, and uh, even uh, uh, these are the major issues because of this particular gap in uh, implementation. So to minimize such a bias to capture the potential for the overall food and nutrition security in another variable. Because when we talk about economic performance, as we talked about, we talked that it is also important with the nutritional, that individual basic needs in that they have taken percentage of net zone area under cereals has been selected to adjust and also to augment the productivity variable. The point is that economic performance doesn't mean that you have to practice particular only some case crop. So this also needs to be understand. 
So to present social equity means social security, then two variables were taken. The one is the proportion of people above the poverty line and the family literacy were selected. The first variable that is the proportion of the people above the poverty line will set light on uh, how equitable the resources are distributed across the economic and the social groups that they will talk about uh, land ownership and others, right? Then the strength of the poverty variables lie in its ability to capture the effect of both the employment opportunities as well as relative availability and distribution of food and other necessities of life. Family literacy is also important because as you look into uh, that um, uh, the role uh, uh, female is playing, women is playing in agriculture in India, uh, we have to uh, look at uh, the rate of uh, their uh, literacy rate. But uh, there are some weaknesses because when you talk about uh, uh, that particular livelihood that looks into economic aspect only, so consequently, the poverty variable was augmented with the inclusion of female literacy variable. The magnitude of female literacy could indicate the potential for active social and economic participation by women. That needs to be appreciated. So that's why uh, then, I mean, taking this particular variables. So we'll see uh, in this uh, table 3.1 in your study uh, material, you will find out uh, different indices and uh, they, for calculating that, uh, they used uh, equation number one. See, we, we have uh, how many in ecological variables, forest cover, nation area, economic variables, land productivity, area under sales. Why we're talking area under the sales is to, un to have a, uh, to understand nutrition value, then land productivity, so that is economic variable. Equity variable, people above poverty line to understand the social status, social representation, then female literation as it was explained. Uh, then we have uh, 15 agroclimatic zone in that you will, you will see here uh, or, uh, that uh, what is uh, the Western Himalaya, what you have, you have seen one to 15, no. Sustainable livelihood security index is very high in this particular one too, uh, is very high in. Uh, Western coastland, uh, Western, uh, Western coastland. So then figure three here, you will see that Reason having the best condition for agriculture sustainability in this is in the Western coast, that is Kerala, Goa, and advanced enclaves of uh, Karnataka and Maharashtra. Followed by trans gangetic region, that is Punjab and Haryana, where the green revolution technology had its greatest impact as compared to the other regions of India. Then, on the other hand, the region having the least desirable condition for agriculture and sustainability are the Western dry land desert area of Rajasthan and Eastern Plateau, mining in the tribal belts of Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, and the Orisha states region. You will find out why they are having, because if you look into three important parameters in that variable, that, that also reflected why they are having that low sustainable, uh, agricultural sustainability in that performance. So it is reassuring to note that since regions with a higher, means lower SLSI rank are those often described as advanced backward Using other economic social indicator, the SLI ranking appears to be consistent with the gut feeling impression based on the other indicators. Then look into other again. So while SLIs give the overall performance of a region, the component of indices that is ecological security index, economic efficiency index, and social equity index. That are the uh, three major index. You will see here in this figure also, which one have a higher ESI and which one has higher ecological uh, economic efficiency, where, uh, which one has socioeconomic uh, uh, efficient uh, indicator. We'll see here uh, that um, as a comparison of its Western coast has the highest SLSI, its EI, EI, ESI is not the highest. 
And a comparison of its three indices indicate that its ecological security is not as good as its economic efficiency. I want to come back here. Yeah, you will find out here. This twelve. See, these have social. Uh, Yes, social uh, social equity index is very high. In Western course, but if you look into economic efficiency, then if you look into this ecological security index, it is very low. So how these three index are related? You just compare, we'll find out that it is not uniform. So I will not go in this detail, you will be able. So these are some of the studies. So what I'm going, I want to come is, what are the limitation of this particular sustainable level security index developed by Professor Aminachan? One is, you know, data constraint. Another is two individual with different shape will not be the same. So, so evaluation, sustainability. Mm -hmm. The limitation is this relative. It gives a value of relative rather than absolute indicator. It has it has only establishing the ranking among a given set of entities but could not say how much an entity perform better than other. Means it gives an qualitative perspective only. Hence the policy in this sense, sustainable livelihood security status could not be measured in any quantitative sense. So SLS, also the SLSI methodology in its present form is applicable only in a cross-sectional context and not in an intertemporal context, which is very important. When we talk about sustainability, we need to understand the intertemporal context. So, which is it is not possible under SLSI methodology. And what its advantages uh, advantages are? It is associated with a related cross-sectional characteristic. Is it permits the incorporation of current state of knowledge reflected in the form of scientific rules, norms, standard, target goals into the SLSI? So we talk about uh, that uh, production. We talk about the uh, forest cover. We talk about natural area. So these are some of the important advantages. Another major strength of the SLSI methodology lies in the flexibility in the context independent nature. Despite its limitation, SLSI can still, can still be a powerful tool to function as litmus to taste for presence. At least it will give a, I mean, screening of what is the status of that. So what we can do uh, to, uh, to improve the, uh, I mean, uh, livelihood of means in the condition of sustainable development uh, when we evaluated from different perspective. So this is the advantage. But it composite nature does facilitate, so it composite nature does facilitate consensus among different partisan groups like economics, economists, environmentalists, and advocates for equity by balancing their material concerns. Means it will give at least an idea how to go about for a policy. Furthermore, since the SLI, SLSI had to focus on the conflicts and also potential synergy between ecology, economics, and ethics in a most non integral way, it can also function as an educational tool, promoting a holistic perspective among planners, administrators, and people. Means it will give an idea. No. So these are some of the references uh, with uh, the refer in writing uh, those units. And I have also looked into that. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, With this, I would like to uh, open the session for discussion.